Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Code Signal Live. I'm joined with Michael Newman, who runs product engineering at Code Signal. Hey, Michael. Hey. All right. So uh, today we're going to take a look at how to run front end interviews using Code Signal, uh, specifically some of the latest and greatest updates that went into the product that make that experience even smoother. So. I'm going to start sharing my screen and we can dive straight into it. Are you ready, Michael? I'm ready. Let's go. Okay, awesome. All uh, right, so let's share my screen. Let's take that out so it doesn't get in the way. Uh, all right, awesome. So maybe, Michael, you can walk us through what we're looking at right now for people who probably haven't used Code Signal before. Yeah, so this is our, our interview tool. So it's a shared collaborative uh, coding area for me and Tigran. Right now, I'm playing the role of the candidate. I'm the developer being interviewed. Tigran is hosting and conducting this interview. Um, you can see that if I uh, type something here, um, you'll be able to, to see that on the other side as well. So I'm typing, but uh, you can see the changes I'm making uh, on Tigran's screen there. Uh, including uh, this front-end preview. Um, this question in particular is meant to ask about uh, building a React form. So the goal here is to create a form that does something in React. Um, and what we wanted to talk about today specifically was the ability to pull in additional libraries to help you um, solve the question. So without going too far into actually fully solving the question over this, uh, live streaming session, we can pull in some libraries and show what's available and how we can see that over the course of an, of an interview. Uh, okay. Because as we all know, front end developers use a lot of third party libraries. Uh, and typically, you're not um, just writing everything uh, yourself, you want to be able to pull in uh, other, other things. Um, so and just to explain what's happening here before you dive into it, uh, <clears throat> you have the description on this side for the question, so I'm just going to minimize that to give us more coding area. And also, you can see Michael is actually on a different tab right now, which I can see him here. So this was me writing this. I'll take this out to not get in the way of what you're doing, and you can see the preview instantly updates. Oh, you came back to my tab. I'll go to your <laughs> JSX tab, and we can take a look at what it looks like to app and use new libraries. Uh, exactly, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and open the libraries panel. Tigran uh, can also open the same panel to see what I'm up to. Uh, so uh, as I click on that, you can see it's you know manage libraries. I have JavaScript and CSS libraries available here. Let's say that I wanted to use a library like underscore, um, a really common, popular JavaScript library. So something I can do uh, is just type the word uh, underscore into the search, and uh, you'll actually see that reflected live on the other side. So even though I added it, uh, that gets added right away for both of us. Tigran can see it too. Um, it might be nice to show the search UI actually. I so I do that. Yeah. What other library? Do you want to do? <laughs> I'll try it. Uh, how about I just remove uh, remove it now, which you can see, uh, and you go ahead and search for underscore and add it. So as I start typing underscore, it shows this beautiful auto completion and says, you know, here are some of your options. So which version do you, I guess the first one? That first result looks great to me. Yep. All right. I'll add it in and I'm hoping it rendered on your side as well. It sure does. So that renders right away for me. I can see that it's been added and I can go ahead and start editing the code to use underscore. So maybe um, I want to say, just a very contrived example, but maybe I want to use underscore, which is uh, here, this literally this underscore dot map, this library function, to create some kind of array that's going to look like 266. Six. Um, and then maybe I want to uh, render that into my React application. So I made a mistake. Uh, What's my mistake? Oh, I already joined it above. So you can see I can easily see script errors in my console and debug them very quickly. Great. Um, and I'm able to quickly resolve that and show that I have 266 just as I expected. So you can see the underscore is working correctly for me here. Um, 
So yeah, that's an example of a, of a JavaScript library. Something else that I think is interesting to see, um, Tigran, if you open the uh, Manage Libraries panel again, something that uh, you may know if you're familiar with front-end development is that the order of libraries matters quite a bit. Uh, so um, in this case, I have React, React DOM, uh, and underscore min.js. Um, if I put them in the wrong order, if I put React DOM above React, that just happens to be the wrong way to include React libraries, and it will cause a script error. Uh, you can see that I can drag to uh, move those. You'll see that reflected. Now it causes uh, an error. Um, and Tigran, if you'd like to show this so it's visible, uh, you can go ahead and drag those to switch the order again. The order it, the error is gone again. The error works. is gone, the preview works again, yep. uh, and everything is just as expected. Uh, so that's <laughs> that's great. Um, Do you want to show off some of the CSS libraries as well, uh, just so I, we can show the rendering? I do, I do. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and add a library called um, Font Awesome, uh, just another pretty commonly used uh, library. So uh, I'll go ahead and add this, but Tigran, if you switch to the CSS tab, you'll be able to see it um, just as before. Um, so we're adding this font awesome file. That's it right there. Uh, and if I add an icon, so I'm going to switch over to this HTML tab. Um, here we go. There you go. You can see that that the works icon there. Yeah, <laughs> just like so. So this is an external CSS library that lets me create icon fonts um, very easily. So this is a, a doctor um, from Font Awesome. Awesome. And you can see that in this project, we have React, which came uh, on the task um, already. So it's already a React-based task. But we added underscore, um, and we've added uh, Font Awesome as a CSS library. Great. And one of my favorite features of uh, our front-end functionality is Obviously, we're looking at this in a free form format, which is run during an interview with me being the interviewer and you being the candidate. But this same exact flow actually works in a test environment with addition of test cases where you can automatically assess correctness of the solution. Uh, in the background, what happens typically is you run a uh, Selenium driver that launches a real browser and checks for correctness. So for example, if you had buttons here, and you wanted to click for some actions to happen, the Selenium driver would actually check that and automatically generate a score, helping automate some of some of this sort of interview process, just so you can do it at more scale instead of having to uh, spend an hour of an engineer's time during every interview. So, absolutely, yeah, we can we can do it in a very free, open format like we're doing now. Mm -hmm. uh, or you could do it against automated test cases that check the that sort of check the mark up against our expectations. Perfect. All right. Uh, I think that gives a pretty good summary. There is a lot more to the tool, but I don't want to go into too many details. Uh, we can save it for another live session, uh, maybe next week, maybe a few weeks from now. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Thanks a lot, Michael, for showing off some of the offerings and. We'll see everyone next time.